Greetings, my dark brothers and sisters. Welcome to Kane Harkonnen Studios. We have yet another unique story to be told. <laughs> Did you know that the origins of the first vampire date back even to ancient Egypt and the rulership of Amenhotep III, who ruled between 1390 and 1352 BCE? Well, I give you the full story of the first ancient vampire. <laughs> Amenhotep III, also called Amenophis III, king of ancient Egypt, reigned 1390 to 1352 BCE in a period of peaceful prosperity, who devoted himself to expanding diplomatic contacts and to extensive building in Egypt and Nubia. He grew up in a royal palace as the crown prince of Egypt, where he was educated in Egyptian government and religious responsibilities of the pharaoh. When Amenhotep was around 12 years old, his father died and Amenhotep was crowned pharaoh. He had an adult regent who ruled for him for the first few years as he grew older and learned how to lead. Throughout his reign, Egypt was at its peak of wealth and prosperity. During his time as a pharaoh, Amenhotep III built many monuments to himself and his gods. Perhaps his most famous construction was the Temple of Luxor in Thebes. Amenhotep also built the Colossi of Memnon towering around 60 feet tall. Amenhotep III died the year 1352 BC. He was buried in the Valley of Kings in a tomb alongside his wife and his most prized riches. Though not everyone desired for those countless riches to remain buried. Even after his death, priests that used to service him in life remained vigilant. They would come once a week to perform a ceremony expressing their gratitude. The priests performing the ceremony were usually the closest ones to the pharaoh while he was alive. They also performed a burial ceremony and were well aware of the amounts of riches resting near his mummified body. One day a priest called Neferi dared to enter his tomb with dark thought in mind stealing the riches of Amenhotep III. Little did he know then, when just before his death, Amenhotep made sure no one will ever disturb his resting place or steal the riches buried with him. He pried open the sarcophagus of Amenhotep III and a few moments later he felt so weak that he was forced to abandon his wicked plan. Barely managing his feet, he somehow dragged himself out of the tomb and back home. The next evening the fairy died inexplicably and arose again after three days. After waking as a newborn in unlife, he noticed a strange spirit hovering near him. The creature then spoke in a most unnatural way. Your theft attempt has earned you suffering for eternity. Never again shall you gaze upon the sun, and only the blood of the living will satisfy your endless thirst. You shall never know love or happiness as well. Humanity in you will be no more. You may as you wish invite others to join you in your cursed existence, if you see it fitting. I also take the name Neferi from you. From now into eternity you are known as Nosferatu the Cursed. The spirit disappeared, and as the last bits of human emotions were leaving his body, Nosferatu cried for the last time in his existence.
resist prey. And you, my child, their mortal enemy. And I bid you welcome, Mr. Harcourt, to my house. Welcome. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> so this is how one worms one's way into my castle. 